This is Dr. Carrie Horn, author of A Soul Aligned, How God Heals His Creations, and Heart Known Series Workbook, a practical application workbook for biblical healing. In this video, I want to talk with you about how to deal with things that the world calls depression and anxiety and things like this. So can you make a decision to not be quote unquote depressed? I was watching an interview of probably a well-known pastor. I really don't know who he is, but um, I was watching an interview that this person was doing and they were talking about how their child had, their children had like turned from the faith and, um, you know, how he had kind of wondered or tried to reconcile, well, should I be doing this because if I can't keep my own house in order, right? Scripture tells us if you can't keep your own house in order or, or a person who is in doing this type of ministry should be above reproach and they need to have their own house in order because if you can't maintain order in your own house, how are you going to be able to do that in the church? I don't believe, now that I think about it, that he ever really reconciled that within the interview about why it is he was continuing to uh, to do this ministry without having his own house in order because I believe the scripture is true. And that's my personal experience is that as I began to heal in Christ, my daughter also began to heal in Christ. My house was not in order before. And it was not of myself that God was bearing that fruit through my household. It was because of my obedience that God was blessing my household. He was bearing that fruit through my child. And that's how it is. And that's how scripture tells us it is. And that is the reason why that stipulation is made, that if you are overseeing the church in this particular way, that you need to be above reproach and have your own household in order. As the interview progressed, this person talked about depression and experiencing bouts of depression. And when asked, well, how do you deal with that now? He responded that he made the decision not to be depressed. He made the decision not to feed into that. And immediately I felt grieved watching this. And not because I want to be really sensitive because it's not that I'm judging this person, but I am discerning based on the word, based on my personal experience, based on the truth that God says If you're going to be in this position of overseeing the church, then your household has to be in order, first of all, and your own state of mind and standing with God is part of having your household in order. If I have not, if I am not actively engaging in God's ministry If I'm not receiving healing from the Spirit of God, I have no business talking with anybody, especially God's church, about how to heal. And the reason his response grieved me is because it demonstrated to me what was going on, that he could not dispense, he could not maintain order in his own household because his own healing was not there. There was no substance to his message. There was no substance to his healing process in Christ. And I want you to know that when people say that you can just decide not to feel, not to experience, not to deal with the things that are going on in your life, what, you are fund- what they are fundamentally saying is they don't believe in the power of God They don't believe that God is sovereign over the things that he sends. Isaiah 45, 7 tells us he sends those things. They they fundamentally do not believe in acknowledging the sovereignty and power of God. Does the word tell us that? That in later times, there are going to be people who have the appearance of godliness but deny his power. They deny that he is the one that sends these things. They deny that he has a purpose in sending them and that they have a responsibility to receive the ministry of God regarding the things that he sends. 
it is wickedness and ignorance to look at anything that has gone on in our lives historically, anything that is being sent in our lives currently, and to believe that we can ignore it, to believe that it is not under the sovereignty of God, and to attempt to manage it without God. Anyone who's listened to my channel knows the way that I feel about diagnoses and syndromes and things like this. I don't believe in them. Christ didn't talk about them. So I don't talk about them in that way. So I'm using language that the world uses. But I want you to know, I don't believe that depression is a thing. I believe that the symptoms exist, but I don't believe that it is the syndrome that the world says it is. If you are experiencing chronic attack in any form, that is a spirit of the devil. And most often you've been handed over to it because of your sin. And the remedy to that is that you need to return to God. That's always the remedy. Always return to God. Return to God and he will heal you. And he will tell you and he will convict you and he will minister to you why that was sent to begin with. Everything has been sent by God. And everything has been sent for his purpose because he doesn't give grief willingly. But he does give grief in order to discipline us and in order to build us for his purposes. And we find that in Lamentations 3. 33. So can we decide that these things go away? I think you know the answer to my quest to that question. My answer to that question anyway. No, of course we can't. God has sent it for his purpose. And the problem is when we start looking at these syndromes and diagnoses as syndromes and diagnoses, we start thinking that some, that these things are outside of the sovereignty of God, that they're outside of the power of God, and that there's no meaning or purpose to them that we have some sort of genetic anomaly, some sort of genetic or uh, gene mutation, or we're missing some sort of neurotransmitter. These are all very superficial and false remedies to something that God intends for your good. He intends it for your good, plain and simple. That's what he says. He intends all things for your good. His plans for you are good, even if what he's sending is painful. He intends to build you from it, and it will remit once you have learned the lesson for the reason why God sent it. And so we, when we start approaching these things as syndromes and diagnoses and problems, rather than understanding the reason for which they were sent by God, by the one who loves us more than we anyone could love us, more than we could love ourselves. When we don't understand the purpose or we're deluded or deceived by the world about these things and we start thinking that we just have to tackle everything that's coming at us, we begin to fight the spirit of God. Do you see that? If God's sending something and I go fight it and I say, oh, and we even use that language. When we go to a doctor, we say, we've got to fight this infection. We've got to fight this disease, right? As though God doesn't have the ability to deal with us and then, re and, and then remit and then relent. We have to go take a pill. We've got to go to a person to do for us what God is perfectly capable of doing for his own creation. In Leviticus 16, God talks about, I think, or somewhere thereof, <laughs> I think it's Leviticus 16 where he's talking about defiling skin disease. I've talked about this in other videos. I talk about it in a soul aligned. We were taught very early on that the remedy to all of these things is return to God. God said, he is the Lord, our healer. If you obey me and listen to the things that I've said, I will not put on you any of the diseases that I put on the Egyptians. I am the Lord, your healer. That's Exodus fifteen twenty six. He is the Lord, our healer. And the people were taught in Leviticus Leviticus 16, that if they had some sort of a defiling skin disease or some sort of a rash or whatever, or a mold in their house, right? These just these examples of symptoms that they were supposed to go to the priest 
The priest was to observe because that's all, all man can do, right? They were to observe. All right, let me take note of what's going on. What does the rash look like? Does it, is it open? Is it closed? Does it have white hair, black hair? Is it oozing? I mean, let's not get disgusting. Okay, so all the symptoms. They would take note of the symptoms. And the reason they were taking note of the symptoms, by the way, is to see if when that person went into isolation and came out, is the condition of that rash worse? Is it unchanged or is it getting better? And that would indicate to the priest whether they had done the work with God when they went into isolation. Did they return to him? Same remedy every single time. Even with a mold in their house, the mold was that the house was then to be isolated. Does that teach us something about our house? Us as a house, as the house of God. Same remedy every single time. We were to believe that he is the Lord, our healer, that he is the Lord, our creator. If we believe that he's the Lord, our creator, why would we not trust him to heal us? Why would we not trust him to be sovereign over us? Why would we not trust him to use certain experiences in our lives to bring us in and to teach us and to build us for his purposes? So can you decide these things away? No. That response reminds me of how God says in scripture that these worthless shepherds dress the wound of his people as though it were not serious. If you don't have healing... If God has not ministered to you, he won't be ministering through you because that's not the pattern of God. Even with his own son, we're told that Christ was tempted in every way and therefore he is able to help us. Is it because he was tempted in every way so now he can understand us? No, it is because of the pattern that God has established. If you're not receiving my ministry, don't go try to execute my ministry because you're not connected to my spirit. In the same way, before Christ was even crucified, he said to the apostles who had followed them on his whole ministry, I am the vine, you are the branches. My father is the vine dresser. If you don't stay connected to me as branches, you don't stay connected to the life source, the father will not bear fruit through you. I said to you earlier that as I healed, my daughter healed too. My daughter is not going to be saved because of what I do. I'm not going to be saved because of what my daughter does, but God will bear fruit. He will bear fruit and we are promised that our offspring, our children will be blessed through us. God will work with us to get our house in order. If we are truly receiving from him, and healing in him. He will get our house in order. So the scripture is true. He will minister to us before he ministers through us. And if that is not happening, and our house is not in order, we have no business trying to make a business and claiming to be servants of God. I hope that this video has helped you to understand and to take heart and have hope and to have meaning and purpose in everything that has been sent in your life, everything that you have experienced. And I've talked about some really painful stuff that I have experienced in my life that I experienced very on, excuse me, very early on as a young child that I had no ability to do anything about. And yet God has known what his plans are. He's known how he was going to build me for the very message that I share with you today. There's not one thing that's been sent in your life that God is not sovereign over, that he doesn't intend to make good, to conform all things for the good of those who love him. And I pray that you will be courageous and that you will have faith and understanding and wisdom to seek God on everything that you have experienced, to resolve those things that are unresolved in your life and to receive the meaning, purpose, 
and testimony lampstand that God has intended because he will use you and he will use the healing that he has built in you for his purposes. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.